Hey guys, Brian Holder here, Brian Holder Graphic Design, coming at you with another WYSIWYG Web Builder 8 tutorial. This is going to be a good one. Got a message from uh, Michelle on my contact form on my website. She says, thank you for the videos that you've posted. They've really been helpful to me. If possible, could you do a tutorial on password protecting your pages with WYSIWYG Web Builder 8? So, I'm guessing this is probably something a lot of you want to know, and we're going to just get into it here. So what I'm going to do over to WYSIWYG Web Builder 8 here, you can see I have no projects open right now. Um, the easiest way for me to show this to you is I am going to uh, use the demo that WYSIWYG Web Builder has provided. So to do that, what I'm going to do is file, and I'm going to create a new page from a template. Okay, I'm going to come over here in this drop-down menu, and I'm going to click on Demo. Okay. Now you'll see that there are, I think, five with the default install here. And I'm going to choose the one that says Login. I'm going to hit OK. Now we have to save this folder, so, or save this uh, project. I'm going to go into my Demos folder here. I'm just going to call this Login. I'm going to save it, and there we go. Now we have a default uh, set of pages here. So the first thing we need to do when doing Password Protect is make sure that uh, we have a database set up. So set up a database. It's real easy. All we're going to do is open up any page that has a login um, element on it. So such as the login page here. You can see it has the login box. So we're going to double click on that to open up the properties. And right down here at the bottom, you have a box that says create database. Um, actually, you know what? The first thing I want to do is just so I don't mess up my website here because I do have a live host, I'm going to put all these full files into a uh, a folder and I'm going to name that test login. So I'm going to move all these files into there and I'll be back in one sec. Okay, so now I'm back. You can see I, I uh, threw all these pages and stuff into a folder test login so that way on my, on my website that's where they'll be in that directory. Um, so the first thing we want to do is create a database and uh, default name is users db, db for database, .php. You can name it to whatever you want. Um, you can even change it from a PHP to like a text file, but PHP is fine. Um, so I'm just going to leave it the way that it comes. I'm going to hit next. And I'm going to choose that I want it to go to my main website, not my mobile site. And if you don't have your FTP set up um, in the program, you're going to need to do that first. I'm just kind of assuming that you, that you do. Uh, failed to create uh, unable to connect to the server. Okay, I, I kept clicking buttons here, so let's just do this again and have a little bit of patience this time. Well, I clicked on next. I think they're waiting for it. Not responding. That's not good. Unable to connect to server path. All right, I need to resolve this. I'll be back in one second. Okay, so apparently Comcast, my cable and internet provider, wants to be a pain in the butt. So we'll try this again now that we're connected to the internet. Okay, so it brought up my uh, my hosting account. Now we need to choose where we want this to be. So I'm going to go into public HTML. And let's see, what, I have to go into test login. You want to make sure that you install this into um, the same exact directory that you're putting all of your protected pages and such in. So since that doesn't exist, I want to create it real quick. Test-login. Hit OK. I'm going to come on down to test login. Where did it go? Lost it. There it is. And that's where I'm going to put it. So I just click on finish to install it there. And it was created successfully. I'm going to hit OK. And that should do it. Um, I think what I have to do now is delete all the stuff in front of it. So it just says that. I think that's what I had to do when I was playing this earlier. So I'm going to go into every single page that has something on it, starting off with login. So we need to open the administrator page and do the same. Database, make sure it just says users DB, whatever you named it. Okay, I left it the same. So that's why I left it the same because it makes it a lot easier. And we did the login page, now the sign up page. Double click on that, come on down to the bottom. Someplace there should be a thing, there it is. Behavior database, boom. Threw that little bit in the front. Forgot password's gonna have that on it. 
a lot of nice features with this. Forgot password. They can users can recover their own passwords. They can change their passwords if they want. And this is uh, really useful for member websites if you're going to have a membership website. I think protected page. I don't need to access denied. Okay, so we're good. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is publish this. I'm going to send it over to the main website. Publish all files. Type site. Okay, good. <clears throat> and so now that I'm on the protected page here, once this publishes and we hit the button, we see what happens when you try to view a protected page that's not oh man my internet went out again you gotta be kidding me okay give me one second i'll be right back alrighty so we're back hopefully i got the internet resolved but i doubt it uh, i have comcast and it's just giving me fits tonight for some reason usually it's pretty reliable but i got it published all i did was publish the site so um, hopefully you guys know how to do that by now um, so i'm going to click right here view published site to check it out see what happens and boom we're in and there's our login page so you can see what happened was when I went to view this page, which is the protected page, since I wasn't logged in, I didn't have a security session started, it sent me over to the login page. Um, so this user and this password actually don't even exist. Um, so what we can do is go over to the user administrator now and create a new user. Um, by default, the password is password. And you can actually change that. By going over to uh, in the WYSIWYG, if you go over to the administrator, and you double click on the settings, administrative password, you can change whatever that you can change that to whatever you want. Okay, and then you can also add, <clears throat> excuse me, custom fields here as well. So you can have a text field, you can have them put in what their website is or anything that you want your users to have, and that becomes a field here. So by default, they have uh, looks like username, their full name, their email address. And that's it. So if you wanted to have a phone number, you can add that in there or uh, any other uh, combination of fields. So I'm going to create a new user. And we'll just use the username Brian. Password. I'll just make my usual password. Oop. I'll be editing that out. <laughs> uh, full name, Brian Holder. And email. Zoho, and you can choose whether or not to have them active. I'm just going to choose active. That way we don't have to go through. But right now, um, one of the cool things about this is that if you make it so that a new user can sign themselves up, um, you can actually um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, make it so that they can't activate their account without uh, clicking a link in an email. There we go. I'm trying to spit that out. Um, so they have email activation, which is really nice. So now I am a new user and I am active. So now I can go to the login screen. My username is Brian. Put in my password here. Click login and I'm in. There's my protected page. I'm now into the area that uh, is protected. So how do we use this practically? Well, basically, you need these elements. You need an admin page on your website. And you need a sign up page if if you're allowing people to sign themselves up. If you're not, then uh, you will sign them up yourselves through the admin page. You don't need to have them sign up. Um, I would recommend having a forgot password and a change password page, which could also be on the same page. I mean, you don't need separate pages for them. That way, your users, if they forgot their password, they can recover it or they can change their password if they need to. And then your protected page. So that's how we get it set up. A uh, pretty basic um, tutorial. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna go into depth with this a little bit more. I think in another tutorial because there's a lot you can do with this, um, especially if you're going to be using um, different page for each person. Um, it's not real practical. It's definitely not very scalable. Um, if you plan on growing this, you know, having a different page for each person when they log in using this system is good for maybe like 10 people and that's it um, but if you're going to have a members based website where everybody logs in and goes to the same page like this um, this is great you know if you have like protected videos or something that you only want certain people to see or articles or if you have a download that only certain people can access um, this is perfect I guess one other thing real quick just so that you can see it um, 
it's it's not on the demo for some reason. Let's change this. You can have it uh, right here. It says login name. Drag this out. You see how it says welcome Brian Holder. I'm not sure how it knows my name exactly because I'm not really logged in or anything. But you can stick this someplace, and we'll put it over there. I think. Um, so bold, no, 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 no. Display the user's name, or you can display their full name. So we're going to display their full name. And welcome. You can have the, whatever the text is before the person's name, the text after the person's name. Okay, so we're just going to leave that as is. We're going to make this a little bit bigger than 8 pixels, just so we can see it very nicely. Hit OK. And, uh, you know, it stinks that I can't align this to the, to the right. I'd rather have it aligned to the right. But we'll just leave it like that for now, just so we can see it. And we'll go ahead and publish this. Because I want you to see this. Man, this internet is killing me today. Okay, so while that is going, I'm going to go into the user administrator and I'm going to edit my name here. Okay, just so you can see if this works. I'm going to put in, oh, I don't know. What should I put in? I'll put in test sample as my name. Okay, so now when I go to log in, I'll give it my same credentials that I have been. You can see right here, welcome test sample. So it thinks that my name is test sample. So let's go to user administrator, edit that back, find holder, save it, go back to the, have a right to protect the page. Hit F5 to refresh my cookies here. Oop, I guess that didn't work. Control F5. Still thinks I'm test sample. All right, maybe I need to kill this session and log back in again. So I logged out and log back in. There we go. That did it. Welcome, Brian Holder. So that's one cool thing that you can do. So at any rate, that was this tutorial. I'm going to get into this a little bit more, I think, because there's some pretty cool things you can do with this. So catch me, uh, catch me next uh, next episode or two. I'll try to crank out a few of those. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It makes me want to do more of these for you. I love doing these videos. Uh, if you have a question, you can hit me up in the comment section or go to my website, my contact page. It's uh, bjholder.com. Uh, links in the show notes, and I'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks.